and I've had so many livestock incidents. When the donkey at Christmas Eve bit my finger and crushed it, that was a good one. But one that always sticks with me is when I was in Frederick, Maryland, which is not quite as rural as the Eastern Panhandle of West Virginia. But it was Christmas Eve, and the church I served was sort of a wacky place. We had four Christmas Eve services. The 7 o'clock family service had a live nativity in the sanctuary. You cannot imagine a live nativity in the sanctuary. Now, we had um, very much sort of a setup like this, and we put down a silo cap, which is a thick layer of plastic, and filled the sanctuary with or the chancel with hay brought the animals in because we had a farm vet there. The animals would come in bucking and kicking and mooing and screaming and carrying on until he'd give them a shot and then they'd go, ah. Except for this baby cow one year, baby calf, little tiny, just a few days old calf. For some reason, every time I spoke, he thought I was his mother because every time I said anything, it was like, ma, ma, ma. Got to be a little bit like it was on cue because, you know, the best was, in those days, a decree went out from Emperor Augustus, Mer, that all the world should be taxed. Suddenly, what there was with the angel, a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, Ma, Ma, Ma. I didn't preach that year. The other pastor preached, and I was quiet for the rest of the service, as was the calf, until I stood up and said, let us pray, and he went, Mer. The congregation was laughing so hard they did not hear the prayer that night. It's interesting, isn't it, when someone recognizes your voice? I asked the vet later, I said, what's his name? And he said, Veal. I said, what a strange name for a pet. And he said, oh, Terry, you're not from the country, are you? <laughs> I have not eaten veal since that day, I'll tell you that right now. <laughs> Mother's Day is hard for a lot of us. It's hard for those of us like me who could never have children of our own. It's hard for those of you who've lost your mom already, whose mother lives in your memory, the one you wish you could call and talk to sometime. It's tough. When I was in Jamaica on a mission trip, I told the story to Pushpa last week. We went. I took a group of 10 people to Jamaica. We had the plans to build a dormitory for the deaf school there since I, it was fluent in sign language. I was going to be the interpreter. We got there. They didn't know who we were. They didn't have any idea we were there. We had their plans and everything. But they were not ready to begin building. The only job they offered us was to put glass on top of the wall in wet concrete to keep children in the neighborhood from coming in and stealing their food. We could not do that work. So we went back to the place we were staying. We were very just devastated by that. And a woman who worked in the nurse, the, the laundry there came out to me and she said, if you'd like to do the work of God in Jamaica, let me help you. And she sent us to some orphanages. One was called the Blossom Garden. All the children there were under three or under. They had no diapers on because they couldn't afford diapers. They didn't have a washing machine. They couldn't afford disposable diapers. Everybody was sort of naked from the waist down running around. As soon as we got out of the car, children would climb onto us and cling to us because they wanted to be held so desperately. I had just found out the month before that I would never be able to have children. And one of these little guys climbed up on me. His name was Ollie, and he clung to me. And if anybody else tried to get up on top of me, he'd bite them till they fell off. I mean, they, these kids really needed to be held and loved. And Ollie looked at me and said, wah, 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 wah. He was thirsty. And I went in, and I filled him up. And every time he took a sip, a little bit would come out the other end. And he drank and drank and drank. And then he looked at me, and he smiled, and he patted my chest. And he said, Mama, put his head on me and went to sleep hard for me to tell that story. To this day, it's been 27 years, sometimes people say, do you have any children? I think I have a son named Dolly. Because sometimes God will give you what you need, your deepest need, with someone else's deepest need, God's will can be done in that. A few years ago, I got a card, not a few years, quite a few years ago, when I was serving the Deaf Church, I got a Mother's Day card from a woman in my congregation who was in her 80s. I thought she was joking, and I said, thank you for the card, and she said, no, 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 not, not a joke, not a joke. She was a deaf woman. She said, my mother died when I was 19 years old. I miss her every day. And she said, thank you for being the mother to the congregation. Now I know I'm not the mother to you all, but I am your shepherd, because that's literally what the word pastor means, shepherd. And we are called not to just shepherd each other. We're called to mother each other. 
We are called to love each other in a way that is profound and real because too many people in the world need that kind of love. They need that kind of attention. They need that kind of hope given to them. When Lambert told me what he wanted to sing today, I thought, well, you know, it gets a little, I think a little, little, little bit sentimental with mom on Mother's Day. Um, let me, let me, before I go on with that, let me tell you what my mother did for me. This is not a tribute, but this is, Katie had the perfect word up there, the fierceness of a mother's love. Mother's love fiercely. My mother was fierce when I was in junior high. How many of you remember being in junior high or middle school? How many of you remember how just wonderful you felt about yourself and your body and <laughs> your looks and your, right? Isn't that just the best time of life? We're all just, just raring to go, right? I was not um, heavy then, but I had a teacher who did not like me because her first day when I was there in the seventh grade, when she was my teacher in the seventh grade, I threw the basketball and it stuck up there. I have no idea how that happened. And she remembered me the rest of my time at Cockeysville Junior High for that moment. She said, no, and everybody can do that. And I thought, I didn't try. I, I'm just lucky it got anywhere near the basket. I'm not an athlete. Can you believe that looking at me? I guess you can. Toby, you didn't have to laugh quite so loudly. <laughs> but my gym teacher remembered in the ninth grade I was there, and she said, come up here, Kofi L. You're going to demonstrate the uneven parallel bars. I thought, yeah, yeah, I'm going to demonstrate. And she's like, jump up and grab the bars. And I jumped, and I jumped, and I jumped, and I couldn't get it. And then she said to me in front of the whole class, get that fat up on that bar right now. When you're in the ninth grade, words like that really hurt a lot. My mom was the cook at Cockeysville Junior High in those days. Some people used to tease me about that, and I don't care. She worked hard, and it was spaghetti day, I'll remember, because she looked like she'd been in the War of Antietam because she was covered with red sauce. She came out to the car, and I was sitting there sobbing, sobbing my heart out. She said, what happened? And I told her what happened. My mother is five foot nothing. Miss Smith, the gym teacher, was like six foot eight. Not really, but close to it. Shoulders like a East German hockey player. I'm telling you what, she was a big, tough, nasty woman. My mother first went to the guidance counselor and said, this will never happen to my child again. Do you understand me? And then she took off for the gym, and I was scared, and I followed her, and she got Miss Smith, was sitting in her chair, and my mother had her pinned to the wall saying, if you ever talk to my child that way again, lady, I'm going to take you out. Miss Smith cried. Tears coming down her face. I got an A in phys ed that semester. <laughs> I did not deserve an A in phys ed that semester, but my mother scared her. That is the way a mother loves, fiercely. That is the way a shepherd loves, fiercely. A shepherd's job is to care for the sheep at the risk of his or her own life. There are great paintings called The Shepherdess. One of the ones up here today is one of a shepherd who is a woman, because lots of times shepherds were women, not in the times of scripture that we read about. But if you know what a shepherd does, they have to prepare the field for the sheep. If there are scorpions, they have to kill them. If there are plants that are poisonous, they have to root them up. If there are rocks that the sheep could hurt themselves on, they have to remove them. They have to take that stick or that sling and put it between themselves and the Miss Smiths of the sheep world, which are wild animals, beasts, people who would come to harm the sheep or steal them from the person who owned them. David said, the Lord is my shepherd. I have everything I need. Jesus said, my sheep just need to listen for my voice and nothing can snatch them from God's hand. I want to read the words that Lambert sang a little bit ago, and I want you to listen to them in a different way. Thank you for watching over me. All the sleepless nights you lay awake, thank you for knowing when to hold me close, when to let me go. Thank you for every stepping stone and for the path that always leads me home. I thank you for the time you took to see the heart inside of me. You gave me the roots to start this life, and then you gave me wings to fly. And I learned to dream because you believed in me. There is no power like it on this earth, no treasure equal to its worth, the gift of a shepherd's love. Jesus Christ is the shepherd for us. He's the mother for us. So if you've lost your own mother, 
you have one in Jesus Christ. Don't think, gentlemen, that you're off the hook for mothering. I have seen some of the best mothers I've ever known have been men who cared for their children when their wives died or left the family. We need to love each other that fiercely in the world because too many people do not know love. They do not know grace. They do not know forgiveness. They do not know hope. I say this a lot. I'm a broken record with this. You got to share with you what you have with, in abundance with the rest of the world. You have to love everyone like you're their mother and you're their shepherd and you're their friend because what you have is what the world needs. You have Jesus Christ, the good shepherd, who is willingly who willingly gave him life, his life for his sheep. We're not called to give our lives, but we're called to give our hearts. We're called to give our love. We're called to give our hope. We're called to give our forgiveness. Do it in the name of Jesus Christ, because someone out there needs to be shepherded or mothered. So shepherd like a mother and mother like a shepherd. Everyone you meet in the name of Christ your Savior. Amen. I invite you now to join in singing again.